Are you struggling with a lack of access to captivating entertainment and media? Are you faced with constant judgment and ridicule from friends and family for your inability to respond appropriately to sensitive situations? If this sounds like you, you might be suffering from being emotionally dead inside. But it's not too late to make a change. One Nothing Podcast is a newly available treatment for being dead inside. Taken just once every two weeks, One Nothing could make a world of difference. By combining carefully measured dark humor to the amazing original formula of grisly fatalities, One Nothing Podcast has successfully entertained thousands of people suffering from death inside. And with access across all podcast platforms, treatment has never been more readily available. But don't trust my word. Here's some real-world testimonials from a few of our listeners currently undergoing treatment. From consistent doses of One Nothing Podcast, my posture has greatly improved due to being kept on the edge of my seat. The One Nothing Podcast comes on, everybody be like, shut the f*** up. I'll be quiet, but when the episode's over, I'll be talking again. Oh my gosh, buddy. I used to be on so many medications for blood pressure. And then I listened to One Nothing Podcast's episode on Kitty Genovese, moved into an apartment on my own, and haven't needed it since. That one really got my blood pumping. You know, listening to One Nothing Podcast, I'm, I'm not constipated anymore. I'm just full of shit. So what's stopping you from great entertainment? One Nothing Podcast is not intended for all audiences. Listeners under 18 years of age should obtain permission from your parent or guardian before downloading. Tell your therapist if you're predisposed to whining, complaining, leading podcasts poorly, being overall combative, or being easily offended, as One Nothing Podcast might not be right for you. So stop letting great content pass you by. Talk to your therapist today to see if One Nothing Podcast is right for you. Welcome to the What the Fuck Is That podcast, where we ask the age-old question of What the Fuck Is That? I'm your host, Jess. I'm Jen. And happy almost St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I guess so. I'm pretty sure that's when this is coming out, and if it's not, then well, happy after St. Patrick's Day. I don't I'm know. pretty sure it'll come out like two days before St. Patrick's Day. Okay, cool. I mean, time's relative. Fuck it. I need to burp and it's not coming. <laughs> oh my god. Time's relative. So. Exactly. Fuck it. We're good. Happy St. Patrick's Day and almost Easter and all of the less fun holidays. If you drink, be safe. I'll make Great. jello shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. You loved those uh... on your birthday. Yeah, they're just quick, easy shots to get down. I also just can't do real shots, though. I mean, same. 100% same. Yeah, no thank you. It's incredible to see one of my friends drink an entire moonshine shot. Just thinking about it makes my stomach hurt. Like the white lightning one that is essentially the equivalent to Everclear. No thank you. I mean, granted, she chased it down with apple juice, but still, but still the fact yeah, that she no. took the whole thing. Yeah, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. I can't. Ugh. Just thinking about it makes my tummy feel yuckas. Stop saying that <laughs> word. <laughs> my God, I thought we got rid of it. No, I was thinking about it today because I was editing Fuck. the last episode and I said yuck. And I'm like, I really missed an opportunity to say yuckas. Stop it. <laughs> I want merch one day that says yuccas. Oh my god. What would have to be our goal to let you, to have you let me get merch that says yuccas? 
if we can sell a hundred of those things, anything that it is, deal. Get ready for a pre-order, guys. Oh, my God. I can already see it. It's going to be, like, in a 90s, like, font, where it's just, like, jumping out at you in colors and rainbows. And the thing is, I can see it perfectly. Yeah, and it's going to come on, it's going to be able to come on white or black. It's just going to say, yuckas. Is it going to be rainbow? It's going to be, like, that, uh, like, think 90s colors. Like, yeah. Okay, deal. So, 100 people... We get to pre-order these beautiful things that I have designed in my head and will probably design in real life at some point. Okay. You get a okay. hundred pre-orders. <gasps> Guys, you heard it right <clears throat> here. We're going to get Yucca's merch. <laughs> now we just have to figure out how to spell Yucca's. I, oh, <laughs> no. You're like, do not help her right now. <laughs> <laughs> No one help her. <laughs> I was like, I would tell you how I spell it in my head, but then you'd actually do it to bother me even Y-U-C-K-A-S. more. Y U C K A S. What? Y U C K A S. Yuck ass. <laughs> I fucking regret everything now. (laughs) Because you know that I am clever enough that I'll find a hundred (laughs) people. If I have to make a hundred fucking accounts. The thing is, is Mm. that (laughs) if we actually do this, that means you actually have to make these things. Or find a provider to do it. I mean, that's also fair. Speaking of which, yes. um, Nico, she has pre-orders out right now for her yes, shirt. Yes, do it. They're so cute. And I she's bought so mine. cute. And her music's so good. So you should like also just check that out. Absolutely. We'll uh, put a link and pictures and all that stuff uh, of hers in the Instagram. Yes. She's adorable, and her voice is amazing, and I think you will very much enjoy it, because we very much enjoy it, and we are not biased at all. Not at all. No. But you should go look at her. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, if you like whatever the fuck this is, be sure to head over to our Instagram. Our Instagram is WTFIsThatPod. On our Instagram, you will find our beautiful little link tree. Over there, you will find all of our links to our fun little goodies, so be sure to head over there. This is everything from our Patreon to different places to hear us, different places to watch us do things like the TikTok and the Facebook. Over on Patreon, if you want to donate us some monies, you get some extra things and you get to see us more frequently. We are also now on TikTok, because we're cool kids now, so be sure to check out that as well. As always, the very best way to help support the show is just to like us, give us a comment, give us a review, tell a friend, or just if you're sitting by yourself and you're just having a nice, relaxing end of your day, and you're like, I'm going to take a bath, and I'm going to listen to WTF Is That Pod, and you're just hanging out in the bath, and then you hear a great episode, like some of our last episodes that came out, especially like our collabs, our collabs are amazing, and you're just listening through, and you're like, oh my gosh, I know my best friend Becky would absolutely love this, and then you're just relaxing in the tub, and you send it to her, and you're like, here girl, I thought of you, and she's just like, oh my gosh, thanks, and now you have a new friendship growing over the podcast and we got to share the podcast with someone else so yeah let's head into this week's episode hey jen hey jess do you know about elisa lamb who the fuck is elisa lamb thank you so much for asking i would love to tell you but for realsies though like how much do you know about elisa lamb i know quite a bit okay so before we get into it Because I had very strong opinions about this case before doing a shit ton of research, and now I'm convinced of a singular way that happened. Okay. I want to know what you think happened, like, in your headcanon, because, guys, I'm going to say it in advance, because I hate when podcasters do this. If you don't know this story, it's quote-unquote unsolved. Mm -hmm. It's technically, like, marked as solved- 
but people but there's question no it. resolution really yeah I honestly think an undiagnosed mental disorder okay was the cause of some things mm-hmm However, I still feel like something happened to her. Yeah. I don't think she voluntarily went into the place she died. Okay. I'm being vague on purpose yeah. for those who don't know. Yeah, well, because that's kind of where my frame of thinking was before I did all the research mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'll, we'll get into where we get to. But, see, the thing is, is that I also think something paranormal had a play in it as well. Yeah. And that's kind of why I wanted to go over the Cecil as a whole, which, if you haven't listened to that episode, go ahead and listen to that one and then this one, because you kind of really get the feel of the energy of this place. Yeah. So while there might have been something completely normal going on, the energy of this place just makes it feel like, mm, something's a little bit off here. And because we didn't actually say it, Elisa Lamb actually died at the Cecil. So yeah, this case happened at the Cecil. This is Elisa Lamb. So mm-hmm. let's let's get into it. So just to set the scene, this is February 19th of 2013. Hotel guests are complaining of water pressure issues and the water coming out in weird colors and taste, which, like... Ew. I understand that this is, like, one stop away from being homeless for a lot of people. Do not drink the water that comes out of the pipes in L.A. Yeah. I don't know why I have to say this to so many people. Do not drink the tap water. No, don't do it. In general, like, probably in the whole of California, like, maybe don't really drink the tap water. It's probably not the best for you. Probably not, no. Um, but yeah, do not drink it in LA. <laughs> that, that was, that's disgusting. Okay. Yeah, so I assume every time, and it mentions it so many times, Ew. where they're just like, and people said it tasted weird. I'm like, no, 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 no. you stop it. It's that uh, Kevin Hart, hey, 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 look at me, look, look, look at me. No. no. <laughs> <sighs> so clearly this is a problem. They're just clearly. like, they're just like, the water always tastes bad, but if it's coming out a weird color, like, we gotta do something about that. Okay, whatever. So Santiago Lopez, who is a long-term maintenance man at the Cecil, goes up to the roof, goes to check the water tank, and finds the naked body of Elisa Lamb floating. Yeah. So now let's get into who Elisa was as a person. Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old student at the University of British Columbia. She ran a blog that she would constantly post on. It was just kind of like a stream of consciousness blog, things that you stop missing that. It was just like a stream of consciousness blog, things that she liked, things that she didn't like, things that were going through her head, her just kind of her life in yeah. general. It was like her journal or her diary. She loved movies and fashion and just had a beautiful personality that shined through on this blog. Oh. Like, you could really get a sense of who Elisa was just kind of reading through them. The thing is, you can definitely tell the time period of this when you say blog. Oh, yeah. This is, like, <laughs> big blog era. Yeah. Like, Do you remember uh, everybody? That's. I think this is, like, how all the influencer stuff just started. Yeah, because she was a Tumblr girly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, I remember Tumblr. I wish I understood Tumblr. <laughs> I wish I understood it. I remember it. I yeah. remember trying to figure it out. Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. So even with all of these beautiful parts of Elisa, she unfortunately suffered from mental health issues. She had been diagnosed with BPD mm-hmm. and had started a routine and getting on meds for that. <clears throat> okay, here's my thing. I think she was misdiagnosed of BPD. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. <sighs> okay, fine. But hey, you do this to me on my episode. So. I know. I know. Bleh. I know, but it's coming. Her darker posts would talk about not being able to get out of bed for several days 
and just not feeling understood by society, which totally understand. I feel like that's also, like, as much as I hate to say it, like a normal 21-year-old in college experience almost. Yeah, pretty much. I think everyone kind of has those days, but she was having a real rough time, like, on top of everything else. Yeah. So I think a lot of these posts just kind of been like, oh, yeah, I've been there without people fully understanding what was fully going on. Uh So with all this drama going on, she decided that she wanted to take a trip, just a solo trip on her own. She was going to do what she called her West Coast tour. Aww. Like, how fucking adorable is that? That is. She started in San Diego, went up to L.A., and from there planned to go to Santa Cruz and end in San Francisco. Okay. So, understandably, with just getting diagnosed and getting on new medication, her parents were really concerned about letting her travel on her own. Yeah, that's understandable. But Elisa was insistent. So her and her parents came to an agreement that they would know what her travel plans were and she would call them every day. And this was on top of constantly updating her blog. Yeah. So at any given time, anyone pretty much knew where Elisa was on her trip. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes you just kind of know what your body needs and like what you need. So if she really felt like this solo trip is what she needed to kind of help herself regulate, like... She's also 21. Yeah. So at that point, like, they can give their opinions about it. But if she gets it in her head that she's going to do it alone, she's going to do it alone. Yeah. Period. End of story. So clearly she's a college student traveling to another country. She's just going to stay where things are cheap. Mm Mm-hmm. So she had gone to San Diego, spent some time there. I think she ended up spending like two or three days in San Diego and then made her way up to the Cecil, which at the time was being called the Stay on Main, which is it's essentially hostel buildings. Okay. So people could just, if you don't know what a hostel is, it's a room with bunk beds and you rent a bed and a little space and it ends up being cheaper than a hotel. Yeah. But you're sharing a room with a group of people who you don't know. Could you do that? I don't know if I could. No, because I've watched the scary movie Hostel. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Maybe before I watched that movie, definitely not now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm also an extraordinarily light sleeper, and I wouldn't sleep at all. I mean, I don't sleep very well in hotels or, like, in other people's beds. We already know the pillow yeah. thing. Could you imagine if you were just, like, in a spot where people are rotating out, like, every couple of days? No, I cannot. I feel like that would be worse than a hotel. For me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. So she checked into this hostel parading as the Stay on Main, which is actually the Cecil, a.k.a. the Suicide. Lovely. So again, this is a room with other people. After complaints from her roommates, she ended up being moved from this hostel room to a singular room of her own. No one ever says what the complaints were. That's interesting. Ever. I have not been able to find anyone who says specifically what the problem was, which is odd to me. That really is. Like, why? 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 What do you think she would do? I don't know. But if she was, like, having mental issues, maybe she was having, like, a break and... I don't know. No one ever says it's just weird. And the amount of ways that it could be taken is, like, okay, interesting. Hmm. Okay. So, again, she's moved into this single room. Now it's January 31st, and this was the last day that Elisa was seen alive. Okay. She visited the last bookstore to get some gifts for her family, and the keeper, when she was interviewed, had mentioned how friendly and kind Elisa was, and how she was getting things for her friends and family back home, and how she was just really excited and full of life. Yeah. And that was really the last time anyone saw Elisa alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So now we're at February 13th. The elevator footage is getting released. And this footage actually took place after she had been at the bookstore. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure when exactly. I just know it was sometime after she'd gone to the bookshop and she was back at... The hotel. Yeah, back at the hotel. Okay. And you've seen the footage. I have. I don't know the best way to describe... It's yep. interesting, for it's sure. It's erratic, almost. It really is. It feels... I don't even know how to describe it, because I guess just being a sensitive, like, I feel like there's a lot coming off of it every time I watch it. It just feels heated. Yeah. Yeah, it's It feels like a frenzy. So the best... So essentially what happens in the video is Elisa is there, she's wearing flip-flops, men's basketball shorts, and a t-shirt. And she looks like she is talking to somebody who isn't there. She keeps, like, hiding in the corner. Mind you, this whole time, it's about a three-minute video. The doors are not closing. No. They do not not close at all. So, Elisa can be seen pushing the buttons, kind of hiding in the corner. At one point, she goes out, and she looks like she's talking to someone. She gets back in. She, like, pokes her head out, looks back and forth. Yeah. She looks terrified of something or someone going on there. And I mean, there's also footage in the hallway showing that there's no one in the hallway for her to have been talking to. So that's, that's where it gets very interesting. Where it's like, in my opinion. Yeah. So this will all come back because we are about to get into some theories Because that's all we know. Yeah. The elevator footage and her doing that, that's the only thing that we know for certain is that she was on that elevator. Yeah. Because there's that footage. Mm -hmm. And then she is missing for 20 days. Wow. Mind you, there was a full investigation. There were dogs tracking her scent. Mm Mm-hmm supposedly people had gone up onto the roof and didn't catch her scent, didn't notice anything. You would think they'd look in the water towers, though. Especially if they it was open like they say it is. Yeah. That's always been the weird part for me. Huh, okay. Because the other weird part of this case is that no one can definitively say if the water tank was closed when the police had gone up there. Hmm. Because... So, I was gonna say, I was like, do we know if her body was in there for the full 20 days? Yeah, based off of the way that her body was decomposing, she had been in there. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, which we'll get into all of it later, those doors Mm -hmm. are heavy. Yeah. So, I... For everyone not understanding, this is like a hinge, and it comes up, and it's on, like, stilts. Essentially. Almost, and it's a big aluminum water tank, and it has a big metal door that comes up on a hinge. Yeah. So you have to have a good amount of strength to open that when you're above it. There's no way she would be able to tread water and pull that down on herself. Yeah, no. How would she have been able to get in there and close it on herself? I don't think she would have. No. She was like five foot. Yeah, someone had to have closed that. Then to go with that, if the police searched the roof like they said and saw an open water tank, Mm -hmm. I think you would go and search that. So if they saw a closed water tank, it's not going to register that anything is off there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. So let's go into the many theories of how Elisa ended up in the water tank. So we're going to get into, like, the crazier theories first. And then I'll say what I think actually happened. Okay. Theory number one is that Elisa found out about invisibility technology. That... Kind of makes sense. It also sounds crazy. It does. But have you seen The Invisible Man? I have that in my notes. (laughs) That movie is so 
terrifying to me. I am so I scared of that love movie. love it. It's, it's so good. It's so good. But it's also so scary. I forgot who I went to go see that with. Was it you? Did we go see it together? I don't know. It was so scary. I loved every moment of it. And I love psychological thrillers. Like, that's what got me into scary movies. This one scared the shit out of me. It also has that... I don't like calling her a good actress because she's a part of Scientology, but... um, (laughs) But it has that actress from Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. She's in that and Us. She's, like, specifically a horror actress, and she does it so well. (laughs) She does it so well. We're just not going to talk about the fact that she's in a cult, but it's fine. Um, Second generation. Oh, my God. She is, though. Okay. She's a Scientologist, and she's second generation. I believe you. I've looked into it. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it. It's <laughs> watch it if you're in a good mind frame. It is yeah very domestic abuse heavy. So if you very. cannot handle that, do not watch this. No. Period. At period end of story. If you have an issue with that, this yeah, is, don't do it. Watch something else. It's a great movie. It is also just realistically terrifying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I literally have that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like immediately what my head went to when you said that. I was like, Invisible Man. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> I still get the ick thinking about that. Anyways. So people start to believe this because Elisa had shared an article on her blog about the government coming up with some sort of technology like this. Uh-huh. And people are like, well, see, see, she shared this article. Millions of people. I was going to say, it's not like she was trying to get an interview with, like, the head scientist or anything. She shared a public article. How many times do we click repost on? Yeah. For someone to then be like, see, see, and it's like, no, 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 calm down. It's fine. People also believe this theory, too, for a way crazy reason. Why? There happened to be a... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So you know how on Google you can just, like, claim anywhere as a business? Mm -hmm. You just have to put it in and say that you're a business, and it'll go, ah, yes, and it'll put you there? Yeah. So there was a business registered to the Cecil called the Invisible Light Society. Huh. It was a media production company. Okay. That had their address listed as the Cecil. Okay. Not really unusual, crazy coincidence, except for one of the creators of the Invisible Light Society went on to work for the government, creating a suit that refracts light. So essentially, invisibility. Yeah. Huh. Which is just a little, there are so many things in this case where you're like, that's not a smoking gun. But. But that is a little suspicious. Huh. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I can, I can, okay. I can see where people are getting A and B and putting it together to make C. Yeah, I can see where the sleuths are coming from. Yeah. Do I think that's what happened? Probably not. Probably not. But I heard all of that and I was like, yeah. Do I think we'll eventually. If I didn't know anything else about this case, I would totally believe that. Yeah. Do I think eventually we'll get to that point of having that technology? Absolutely. But. And that's the other reason. We'll see how terrifying that will be. (laughs) That's the other reason why I'm like, I can't completely rule that out because I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Yeah. But I don't think that they were going out. Do you know how much that would help the military? Oh my god, I know. But I don't think that they were like, oh, we better take out this 21 year old girl who shared a public article on her blog. Yeah. I mean, unless, unlikely. Unless she actually, like, had proof proof. Yeah, which I don't think so. I don't think so either. So theory number two is that she was playing the Korean elevator game that's supposed to take you to a different dimension. Have you heard about this? I have, and I will never try it. Oh, absolutely not. So no. for people who don't know, essentially you go through this series of going to different floors. There will be an old woman who comes on or, like, somebody that's supposed you're supposed to know 
something along those lines. And you're not supposed to talk to them, not supposed to acknowledge them, and then you'll end up in essentially a parallel dimension, and then you have to get back on the elevator and do the pattern in reverse. It sounds terrifying. Some Redditors have posted that they've had continuous hauntings from this. Yeah, and then apparently there's, like, some repercussion or something if you do end up talking to that person. Yeah, she, like, follows you forever. Yeah. I'm like, no, I don't even fuck with Ouija boards. Exactly. I'm not gonna fuck with this Korean elevator game. Yeah, no thank you. No. No thank you. Like, I didn't even do Bloody Mary I was about to say- I was just about to say, I didn't even fuck with Bloody Mary. <laughs> Mm-mm. Girls would, like, do it in the bathroom, and I'm like, mm, I'm nope. out. I'm out. Um, I'm good. No, it's that SpongeBob me. I, I'm a head out. out. <laughs> yeah, I was, mm-mm. I was thinking about that today. I'm like, I think I did it, like, one time, and I had my eyes closed the whole time because I got, like, bullied into it. Yeah. I'm like, I am not about to take home. Whatever the fuck is gonna happen. Oh no, absolutely I not. I am not putting my protections down for shit. <laughs> yeah, no. Mm-mm. You will never catch me dead doing that, this, or a Ouija board. No. No. So while this makes sense because Elisa can be seen in the elevator kind of pushing random buttons. Yeah. This game wasn't popular at the time that Elisa was alive. And it wasn't translated into English until after her death. Okay. And it was in Korean, which Elisa didn't speak. Okay. So there's really no way that she would have known about the game in general or how to play it. Yeah. So that kind of tosses that out. Okay. Makes sense. So there's the idea that she was maybe murdered or forced into the water tank somehow. And see, that's where I can get on board a little bit. Yeah, and I am definitely was on that for a while. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, she's seen in the hotel lobby with two men who give her a box. We don't know where this box is. No one knows anything about this fucking box, apparently. Interesting. Other than it was two men who gave it to her in the lobby of the Cecil. I wonder, is it Patrick's box? I don't know. (sighs) What? From Spongebob, Patrick's box. Oh, Mystery God damn box. It. <laughs> that was a fucking deep cut, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the fact that she was seen wearing men's basketball shorts in the elevator. I tried to highlight this earlier when I was talking about what she's wearing. Yeah. So Elisa was really into fashion and being put together when she's out, mm-hmm. which is very much how I am. I would not leave my room in basketball shorts to go onto an elevator where people could then see me. I would. I 100% would. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, somebody who I'm, No, like, I know. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Somebody who's, like, into fashion and into having themselves presented a certain way when yeah. out in public, I don't think she would have left wearing that. Do you think something happened to her? I don't think it was something nefarious. Okay. I think she might have had, like, a little booty call. Okay. Yeah. I think something might have happened to her clothes or something happened and that's Walk what, of shame, yeah. maybe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People also point to the fact that her blog kept posting even after she was going missing. So web sleuths are like, well, see? See? She's still posting. So maybe it's her killer's... Acting like she's still alive. You could schedule posts. Yeah. So she probably just had, like, schedule post queued up and then would just fill in as she wanted to throughout the day. It's not... uh, It's, again, one of those things that is weird. Yeah. But it's not a smoking gun. Yeah, it's, like, it's suspicious, but it can be explained away. And there's so many things about this case where you're just like, huh? I mean, I guess, but huh? Yeah. Which brings us into point number four, which is another one where I'm like, oh, okay. There is a thought that Elisa was being used as a tuberculosis experiment. So hear me out. Hear me out. At the time of Elisa's death, 
over 400 people who were homeless and lived on Skid Road had contracted tuberculosis. Oh, goodness. In 2013. Like, I want everyone to remember this because there's so many things about this case that just makes you think like a 70s, 80s case. We are in 2013. Yeah. Over 400 people contracted tuberculosis. That's that's a spike. Like, that's almost... That's a huge area of populace. And yeah. I understand, like, that's not communities, normal. you're close together. But still, that is a lot. That's not normal. No. There's thoughts that putting Elisa's body in the water when she had contracted TB was to then see how it would contract in people in a water supply. Because, again, this is the Cecil. A lot of people are getting free water from the pipes. Yeah. So how it would travel in water and how those people would contract it. Okay. But if that's the case, how did she end up in the water tank? So the theory then would be that somebody had pushed her into the water tank and closed it. Oh, to see how. Yeah. Okay, got you. The weird connection part with this theory is that... There was tuberculosis research going on at the University of British Columbia, where Elisa was a student. Oh. Yes. And people who contract severe tuberculosis are known to have erratic behavior and hallucinations, which would then explain the elevator footage. If you're trying to make it look like a girl jumped into a water tower of her own accord, knowing that she already has a mental disorder, putting that footage out and then her being found and being like, oh, no, she just threw herself in the water tower. When tuberculosis could also cause hallucinations, that would then give them that evidence. Yes, but the elevators stay open for so long. How? I don't know, unless somebody had disabled the doors somehow. I don't know. I mean, it, it sounds plausible the way you put it that way. Yeah, so there's one other kind of weird thing. Oh, God, okay. The test, uh-huh. like to test for tuberculosis, yeah. is called the Lamalisa test. It's an acronym for something else, like something medical and sciencey. But the acronym comes to be the Lam Elisa test. Is it really? Yes. Huh. So the part that kind of blows this out is the timeline for research and when Elisa would have been a student didn't really line up. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Like, there's no other time that she could have been, like, brought into this research because she would have been too young to have been at college at the time. Maybe they had been working on that. And when she was in college, she ended up getting, like, into it. Maybe. Somehow. Or just a mad scientist at the school. (laughs) But yeah, it's crazy. And the fact that the name of the test is called that. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So again, these are just like the main couple of things that people think about when they think of what could have happened to Elisa. Yeah. These are like the main web sleuth type ideas. Okay. So now let me tell you what... I think happened to Elisa. Okay. And I'm pretty sure this is more correct than not. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So I think with having a set schedule and being at home in Canada and her medication, she started to get into a good routine where her mental health was at a good level. Mm -hmm. So with that, she's fell into the type of mentality of, well, clearly I'm better, so I can do all the things now. Yeah. And decided to take this trip. 
I think that... I think when she gets to San Diego and starts the trip, she starts to have a little bit of slips because she is outside of her normal routine. She is alone in a city in a country that she does not know. Yeah, so she may have skipped on a couple of days medication. Yes, and that's just a lot for people who don't have issues to begin with. I mean, it happens to me. Like, I will go throughout my day and I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to take my meds. Oh, yeah. Well, and just, I'm just thinking, like, the stress of not knowing where you're at in the city and kind of all of those other external factors oh, yeah. might have also been affecting her because she was going from her set routine and being comfortable to all of this going on. Yeah. <clears throat> so like we said about the medication, I think the morning she died, she forgot to take her antipsychotics because I forgot to mention this earlier on, but when they were doing the autopsy... They found that she didn't have any alcohol or drugs in her system. They did find her medication in her system, but not enough to show that she would have taken it the morning that she died. Does that make sense? No. Okay, so that morning that she died... Oh, yes, She it does. did not okay. take her antipsychotics, yeah. and they're able to tell that just because of how much she had... Got you. ...at the time of the autopsy. Got you. Okay. So I think she's just, like, hyped up, out of her routine, forgets to take her antipsychotics in the morning. And then I think she starts on a manic episode. Okay. And that's when she goes to the bookstore, because the bookstore, because the bookkeeper commented she was very friendly, she was outgoing, she was buying books for her family. She was on that stuff. high, yeah. She was having a manic, like, uh -huh. just hyped up. <clears throat> So I think following this manic high, she meets someone and has a hookup at the hotel. I think something happens and she either gets kicked out or like leaves in a hurry and is wearing the gentleman's clothes. Yeah. Then she gets on the elevator and that's when I think the real psychotic break happened. So there is a movie called Dark Waters. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it is Elisa Lamb's story. Like, this girl is seeing a spirit and ends up, like, seeing her dead in a water tower. Oh. So, Elisa, being a movie person, like I mentioned at the beginning, would have seen this movie. Yeah. So, if in her head, she had either watched that movie or thought about that movie, something in her head could have replaced things in the movie into reality. That makes sense. So yeah. the elevator scene could have been her seeing like that spirit or something and yeah. telling her to go. From here, I think she does climb the fire escape and I know this is hotly contested. Okay. So many people are like, well, how would no one see her? Um, I don't know. How are there so many like dead bodies that have jumped off? Not wrong. And recently unidentified. Because, again, if you haven't listened to our episode on the Cecil, go listen to that. Like, two of the last three bodies yeah. were unidentified. No idea who they were. So you cannot tell me that no one would have noticed if she was climbing on the fire escape. Not only that, it's also not the best places where, like... No one gives a fuck. Yeah, no one gives a fuck, like... Everyone is doing their Everyone's own Everyone's doing their own sketchy thing. Yeah, so no one really gives a fuck. Um, they also say that there was an alarm that would have notified the top two floors and the front desk. Mm -hmm. Y'all, it's the Cecil. Yeah. Do you think that all of their alarms and systems are working 100% of the time? No. No. I think it is very highly that they were having an issue with it the alarm. It was faulty, yeah. Yeah. Which would also make sense because in the Netflix documentary, which don't watch it, it's not good, <laughs> why the manager was being so cagey about it. Yeah. Because she might have known that the system... Didn't work. Wasn't working. Yeah. Or something was going on during that time. Yeah. I don't know. She just always looks very suspicious to me. I don't know if anyone else noticed it, but she just always looks suspicious. So I think with her head following the plot of this movie... She goes up there, she sees the open water tank, 
and then jumps in to follow this quote unquote spirit that she's seeing. Okay, but how does the water tank close? That's my only thing. And that's why it hinges on what's the water tank open or closed. Because the only other thing that I could think of was, like, if there was some sort of, like, handhold inside or some way that she could, like, hold it and jump in at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that she was naked, she probably got hypothermia being in the water and took her clothes off. But where are her clothes? Her clothes were in the tank with her. Were they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think she got... Yeah, because when you get hypothermic, you actually start taking off your clothes because you think you're you're getting hot. Yeah. But actually you need it because your body's getting so cold. And, and especially with her treading water, yeah. her body still would have gotten hot too. So mm-hmm. she would have been like taking it off. Trying to float because she thinks that it's going to bring her down. Yeah. Yeah. But see, okay, can I say my opinion? Yes, because that was all I had. Okay. So I agree with a lot of what you said. However, the one thing that I think is that she was misdiagnosed with BPD. However, if we put in the factor of the fact that she ended up kind of having like a one night stand or something like that, you know, that theory in Uh there of uh, being with someone. Yeah. BPD does kind of make sense because when you're in that manic episode, you can become hypersexual. Well, and then looking into it, you can also have hallucinations with BPD as well. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I was like, it feels manic. Because of the way that she then interacted with the store clerk also. That makes sense. However, part of me still thinks that it's not BPD and some other uh, psychological issue. I wouldn't be surprised because if I remember correctly, she had been diagnosed with that literally right before her trip. Yeah. I don't think it was that long. Yeah. And it's not uncommon to get a diagnosis and then you start to figure out what's working and what's not working and explain that to your provider and they go oh it's actually this because of x y and z yeah i think it might have been towards more schizophrenia which she might have had coming on because i don't think that comes on until your early 20s yeah yeah that's when typically you have a break Typically, it's males who uh, get schizophrenia, but it's not impossible for females to get it, obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she had both also because of these low lows that she was having. Yeah. It's very rare that someone can have schizophrenia and BPD at the same time. Oh, okay. However, there are a couple cases, but it is very, very rare. Yeah. Well, I mean, with how weird this case is, I wouldn't be surprised at anything anymore. Honestly, yeah. But yeah, so I, when I first heard this case, it just sounded super nefarious. And then the more and more I've looked into it, I'm like, no, I think it was sadder (laughs) and less nefarious. It's still, there's just still so many weird little things where it's like, huh. That's suspicious. Yeah. That's weird. I mean, either way, like, it's a tragedy. But, I mean, it, it, it's interesting to see that no one can really agree on what happened. And again, guys, this was 2013. Yeah. I always have to remind myself with this case because it's one of those cases that happened recently enough where you're like, this thing shouldn't happen. It happened 11 years ago. And then it does. You're like, how does somebody just go missing for 20 days in the hotel that they were staying at? I don't know. That's insane to me. And just with it being at the Cecil and all that energy in general. Yeah, it's just, that makes it even more sus. Oh, there's so many weird things with this case. Hmm. Ugh. But yeah, that was the insane, tragic tale of Elisa Lamb. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Are you ready for a disturbing fact now? 
no, but I guess you're just gonna fucking tell me. Just raw dogging it into me this week. Jesus. You bet I am. There are only two days in your entire lifetime that you're not alive for 24 hours. Jenny, you. <laughs> think okay, about thank that. Thank you for that existential crisis that you just gave us all. Congratulations. You're welcome. You're welcome. Gold star for you. Thanks. Take back my good noodle star. Um, <laughs> well, if you like whatever the fuck this is, be sure to head over to our Instagram. Our Instagram is WTF is that pod. Excuse me. Nice. Make sure to listen wherever you get your podcasts and just make sure to tell a friend and share it with a buddy and let everyone know about our super duper amazing podcasts and do not drink the water in LA. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Could you imagine if you died on your birthday at the exact time you were born? Mm-hmm.